the new ration books are coming. So look out for announcements and posters which will tell you when and where to fetch them. You'll see them in your local papers, in post offices, in cinemas and so on. Meanwhile, fill in the reference leaf, this one. Don't post anything. And watch food facts in the papers. I'm just going to tie the whole thing and then we cut wood. Yeah, fantastic. Mate. Wow. Oh, We're going to put it on the spit. Oh, yeah, on the spit. I don't know, I'm going to ask Clive. I reckon on the spit about three hours. You reckon about three hours? Longer. Longer. It's brisket, it's a slow cook. Let's look at that, it's fantastic. You could double that cooking time. Is that four or five hours? Yeah, easy. But do you know what? what? It don't matter, because once it's on there, you can just carve it off as it's cooking. Yeah, so. nice. Chaps, here we have the 3.2 kilos of, of brisket from Hammond's Butchers here in Ashton in Surrey. Now Clive has prepared this for me. He's rolled it and stringed it into a beautiful piece of brisket. Okay, so what we're going to do is just going to transfer out of the bag. We're going to get some of the blood and stuff in there, which we want to just remove out of the way. Okay, there we go. And we're going to pop it down onto a piece of cling film, like so. We've actually got one of these rubbed by the meat co lab called Dirty Cow. Okay, this is a crustal distortion for brisket and beef ribs. Um, it's got mocha, coffee with pepper, and umami boosters in it. So, um, really looking forward to trying this. I've heard great stuff. So, a big shout out to Meat Co Lab. There we go, and um, let's see how this turns out. There we go. We're going to give it a good coating in this rub and we're going to wrap it afterwards and we're going to refrigerate it for about 30 minutes okay I like to get a good coating of rub on um, on any beef really that I do you've seen me do the you know the sharing rump the steak when I use the carnival black I just think it creates a really nice crust yeah so um, I wouldn't be shy with the the rub when you're using these, and you don't need to salt or pepper because these these rubs are like have got everything in them. Yeah, so what you're putting on, you're making a crust here, and you're letting that flavour soak into the beef. Okay. Make sure you, you give it a good coating. And when you think it's just about enough, my rule with thumb is give it a bit more, okay? And don't forget the ends, all right? The ends didn't do anything wrong to, to you. The ends are the most important bit, all right, old chaps? There we go, flip it on its head. Give that a nice pat down, okay? So our skewer is going to go right through the middle of that. And the good thing about the TJM Metal Works large spit, it's super, super sharp as well. So trust me, you won't have any trouble pushing that through. I think we're about there, that's good. Now remember what I said, when you think you're done, put a bit more on, right? Don't be shy. Don't be shy at all. And you'll thank me for this later, all right? Get that rub on there. You're gonna probably use about half that tub, but it's a big piece of meat, so. All right, there you go, state detectives. There is your brisket. Now that's all that's left to do is to roll it up in the cling film, okay? So we lock all that flavour in. It's such a big piece of brisket that the cling film is actually not really wide enough, but we'll have to we'll have to go over it again the other way, okay? And keep keep all that rub in there as you do it. You'll see a lot of rub that's on there. Any any spillages, just get that and chuck that in there. Alright, state detectives, get that in there and make sure. You're just maximising all of that beautiful rub. Right? It's 
think we're worth doing a couple of, of rolls on the cling film. All right, just just get it a nice pass on there before I take that off. All right, so what you end up? It's like a giant sausage. Don't tell Fritzy, will you? We'll be in all sorts of trouble. Now, one of the important things I should have mentioned earlier on was that you want to be taking the brisket out of the fridge a, a good hour before you apply the rub, okay? Because it allows all of the muscles in the in the in the joint to you know, relax and the flavours to really soak that uh, rub in. And then when you put it in the fridge, it will also contract again, and then take it out the fridge and leave it for a good twenty minutes to half an hour prior to putting it on the spit and cooking, okay? And then that way you're gonna get the maximum amount of flavor out of the brisket. Sell chaps. I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you the TJM Large Fire Bowl. It's a fantastic piece of kit and I've used it a couple of times already. You saw me use it at the Bushcraft Show and um, I just love the simplicity of it. You've literally got three legs that pop in. And there you have it, the TJM Metalworks Large Fire Bowl. It's fantastic with three inlet holes here. So you can get some good airflow coming into the fire bowl. I've been using restaurant grade charcoal with this, but also um, I've been using some seasoned hardwoods um, in it as well. And it's just been fantastic. Um, everything. So uh, lovely piece of kit, would highly recommend it. And it goes perfectly with the spit and the medium split grill that I have that you see me use as well. Okay, old chaps, momentarily. And as you can see there, old chaps, it just goes perfectly in between the large spit. Um, you've got some good distance there between your coals and what we wanna do is cook there at a, at a slow level, okay? You can always just push these in further um, if you want to get the, you know, the joint of beef or whatever you're cooking nearer to the heat, okay? So that that's, um, um, a great flexibility to have with this piece of kit and set up. Again, this looks quite heavy. It's not that heavy. Uh, again, with these uprights, you know, really, really easy just to stow in the back of the car if you're overlanding, or even just, you could just tuck them in the back of your pack if you wanted to. And equally, the spit part does break down. Um, obviously, the fire bowl's a bit heavier, um, yet you could just not have the fire bowl and you can just have a, um, um, a spit if you're going out behind enemy lines and just cooking um, a piece of you know sort of chicken uh, a brisket or whatever you're going to cook okay so again um, I love the detail around these um, I call them rams heads that Trevor does um, I just think they're fantastic um, they look you can see the quality and the twist of the material you can see the finish there is is um, it, it just screams British engineering uh, and um, and that's what I love about Trevor's stuff and his brother's stuff, David, as well. It's all made here in Blighty, and I have huge respect for that. And you know, <laughs> I honestly, I, I hate those briquettes that you get in, you know, in the barbecue scene. I mean, just look at that. You are literally cooking on already seasoned <laughs> tree, okay? I mean, you don't get much better than that. That is pure, as the French say, charbon de bois, plant grade, charcoal. There's no, there's no chemicals or anything like that in it. That is pure. Absolutely fantastic. 
that's what we should be cooking on outdoors when behind enemy lines, old chaps. old chaps just gonna unravel this this has been in the fridge for about an hour okay and there you go you can see the the rub has really soaked in to the brisket okay I'll do that that's absolutely fantastic and the next stage is now to is now to position this beautiful piece of beef onto the TJM Metalworks large spit for roasting. Now the spit comprises of what I call these looks like Raphael from Ninja Turtles. These are the prongs to hold it in place. I keep a cork on the end there because this is very sharp. Don't have to but more for transporting purposes. So this one, the M1 comes off of there like so. And then you're left with a ninja sword, old chaps. All right. I mean, the workmanship on this is just fantastic. It really is. The detail that Trevor goes to with this blacksmithing, it's, it's just absolutely beautiful. And this being absolutely mega sharp, just glides through any joint of beef or pork or chicken or lamb, whatever you're cooking, it just goes through absolutely beautifully. So obviously just starting with one end. There she is, she's through. The prongs just pull a piece of the side out of the brisket so you can hold it in place, okay? You don't need to get that right in, but just gets a nice hold on the, on the brisket and just feed it onto the a skewer like that okay and these are really just to hold in place and the other one is going to come in from the other side there you go we're about even apart so you've got enough space to get it onto the tripod you've got the string in here which could actually work to hold that in place see I've, I've managed to get the string in there so that can just tighten up now, that's going to really hold it beautifully. Tighten these up, these screws up. That's what I love about this spit. You've literally got everything held in place. You want to, okay? So there you go, old chaps. She's ready to go on. What did I say, old chaps? Fancy that. It's now time to get the brisket on the fire. Ruddy well don't care who knows it. As I said, you can adjust these down depending on what heat you want to get onto your meat. Okay, I actually like to start off low and slow. I'm going to bring these up slightly because I'm thinking that's a bit too hot. Okay, and then as we go, you can adjust the temperature. So as we go, you can adjust the temperature very easily just by tapping these in um, to the ground, okay? Um, and then what we'll do is we'll turn this every 20 to 25 minutes so we can get an even amount of heat on each side of the beef okay and very easily with this you can just lift on both ends and turn like that and we keep repeating that process for the next five hours
rig old chaps just carved a bit of brisket there as it's father's day there's a new father over there to be my brother right old chap very well old chap fantastic well we're going to chow down on this brisket that brisket just takes a biscuit you know what I mean old chaps didn't it Joe I think I might have to frisk it. <laughs> I bet you will, old chap. Here we are on Father's Day. Um. Oh. Mm. That brisket cooked over the white coals in that rub. Absolutely fantastic. Big shout out to TJ and Metal Works. Cheers, old chaps. Fantastic beef brisket, just like you now made in 1940. Happy Father's Day, Charlie Holmes.